All right, we're off to Cleveland. All right, guys, so we're at rest stop two, and we just got Dunkin' Donuts and Timmy's. So the Tim's here actually have poppy seed muffins and the original lids for uh, coffees and everything. So this is the second rest stop, and we'll let's see if we can make it to Phil, not Philadelphia. Where, where are we going in Cleveland? Let's we'll see if we can make it to Cleveland. From All right, guys, we've made it to uh, the parking lot of Fan Expo. So we're going to head in for the second time because we just got my pasta authenticated. So we're going to go back in. All right, guys, we're at Undiscovered Realm here. This is at uh, Fan Expo Cleveland. There's some really cool pops here. We got a Chase called Bant there. Uh, we got the, you guys can see that. The Evil Groundskeeper Comic Con exclusive sticker and Vampire Burns Comic Con sticker uh, from Simpsons. Got a Freddy Krueger's. A lot of horror pops here. Got some horror Pearl Jam. Back Pearl. Ooh, that's a good pop. Not the uh, Air one though. The original Master Chief up there. Oof. 750. Not bad. Alright, let's take a walk over here. Yeah, I actually get some pops that I would be interested in, which are the Professor Farnsworth and Astrid. But I'm probably not gonna buy I spend enough money already. Some really cool pops here. So this is the Undiscovered Realm. You can find them at Undiscovered at UndiscoveredRealm.com. Some really, really cool pops here. Hi guys, I'm here with Carter from Inevitable Collectibles. It is cool. correct. So the guys, these guys run a store and they've only been going for over a year and a half, or about a year and a half? Over a year and a half. Cool. I, well, just about there, yes. Cool, very cool. So these guys are going a little bit under PPG for most of their pops. They're trying to stay a little fair here in the pop game, which is always nice to see. They're not gonna gouge you for too much. Yeah, we don't like doing that. It's just, it's hard enough to get some of these and we like having people come back and wanting to buy more and the easiest way to do that is to kind of more appropriately sell. Especially kids. We love seeing kids' faces when they get something they really want, and you can't do that when you gouge. Yeah, exactly. So, you said you have a collection of your own, right? I do. Do you know how many you have in the collection? So, the Funko app got really wonky on me, and I did lose my exact count, but individual pops, I believe I am now at around 500. 500? Oh, wow. I am going to cut down soon, but my individual collection is probably around there. Well, I mean, at least you have a good source to uh, kind of disperse where you're going to cut yes, down, right? Yes, that is true. Yeah, so, and, I, and there we go again. Yeah, like, I don't necessarily have to gouge because exactly. I kind of got them all. Yeah. So, what's your most expensive pop in your collection? If you can uh, name it off by heart here. Spider-Man Blacklight Target exclusive came out in March or April of 2020. That's a it good was, one. It was in a pop and tea set. That one, that was one of the... That's a funny one because we usually pop and tees don't go for very much, but that one went for a lot. Yep. So, very impressive pop to have. And you said the most uh, expensive pop in the store today would be this Dobby, right? That we have here, yes. So, they are only asking $170 for this Dobby. That is a great price. I think PPG is around $200 or so. So, you guys are way under PPG, which is always nice to see. Like you said, you're under. You're just trying to get people what they want. You're not trying to gouge anybody for money. So, that's always really nice to see in the fun yeah. community. That, so. is, that is something we're big on. Yeah, which is really nice, so I do appreciate it, guys, and thank you again for letting me uh, talk to you. Yeah, of course. So I hope you guys have a great day. Here's just outside Inevitable Collectibles here, guys. We can go around here. Got the box so you can get signed at all at a good price. So my hero, guys, so this is, oh, I think I got my thumb covering up the mic there. Oops. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't hurt it, but got some really cool stuff here. We got a giant charger, that's wicked. So, the most expensive pop here is $170, which again, is under PPG, which is amazing that these guys are doing it. I appreciate their, their service. You guys can find them, I believe, probably on Instagram at Inevitable Collectibles, and they do have a website coming up soon. So please feel free to check them out. They're super cool. All right, guys, we're here at Toys Bought at Cleveland Comic Con. There's a lot of really cool stuff here. So there's a lot of expensive stuff here. I will show you guys all that in just a minute. We have some Assassin's Creed up there. A lot of really cool stuff over here. A lot of glare though, so it's a little bit hard to see it. We've got some Destiny ones. Oh, that's a Vala. That might be picked up. Really, really cool stuff. We've got a Cousin Eddie. That might be picked up to go with my card as well. Over here we got some movies, along with some sports. We got some TV shows and movies. They actually have the OG Toothless. 
That's really cool. I have a lot of really, really old pops. Oh, common Renji. Oh, that, that, that's, a, that's a good price. I have to buy that. Because that's one of the two I need for my bleach set. Okay. We got some Fire Force here. That's all vaulted now. Oh, you asked me some yeah. questions? Sorry. Uh, what's your YouTube channel? Oh, it's Nightpig21. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I got people asking me who I am now. <laughs> Anyways, I got some more stuff over here, guys. Got some Yoda down here. Got some OG Batman from the Dark Knight. Love that. Some Flash Pops. Got a Cisco Ramon. That would have been good to have, you know, last week. <laughs> Some stuff down here, some Naruto, some anime in general. Oh, nice, very nice. We're getting to the expensive stuff now. So over here is all expensive stuff. This Doug, I think, is like 350 PPG. The star, I actually have that star. And all this stuff. We're about to get into even cooler stuff, believe it or not. We have all these OG little crush. All the OG DC. Hey, this is some really cool stuff here. Look, they didn't have peeps. I didn't even know they had pops or peeps. So I'm gonna ask that price on that Renji and we'll see what happens. All right, so unfortunately, I'm not gonna buy that Renji. It's too much money and it's cheaper for me to buy in Canada. So on to the next booth. All right, we are here at Sweet Boston Designs here, guys. We have a Marty McFly checking watch at $80. Some really cool stuff here. I said a lot, but it really is some really cool stuff. Got a sound wave of taste for 30. Now, this is all US. Ooh, speed rates for 10 bucks. Not bad. There's some stuff that's really nice and like fairly priced, and we got some stuff that isn't. So we'll see. We have a Lemonhead Funko Lupin exclusive scented. That's cool. I don't know if we got this in Canada or not. Custom glitter on the runaways, that's cool. We got a fix of Felix, oh that one's nice. So, we're to the other side. They're on the, uh, just literally on the flip side of it. Oh, uh, that's a Master Chief Hollow. That one, that one's really cool. I feel, like that's a, I feel like that's a re release. I feel like I've seen that elsewhere. Cool, cool stuff. There's another set, we'll see if we can make it. Alright, so the most expensive pop here would be this pop and tea at 150. This is the Black Light Spider Man. It's really nice. It's a really cool pop. It's more over here. It looks like they got, these guys more or less specialized in Lego figures, which is really cool. You see that quite often at uh, cons. These ones look really nicely done. So, this is Sweet Blossom Design again. So, this is a uh, Alright guys, over here at Galactic Toys, they have the same stuff as the last con. A few autos, if you guys can actually see that. I don't know if it's quarter or not to you. Um, my screen's a little blurred. But we have a few autos and we have a few normal ones. Same thing as last con, except the uh, autographs they have is Tondro, Commodo, Zeno, and Midnight. Very cool autos. The same exclusives. I mean, actually, this Kuna Chase is a little bit cheaper here. It's 70 Canadian and now it's 50. Same with the Kid Blue and Tondro. So I think that's actually a little bit cheaper to buy them here, but it is what it is. All right, guys, here at Endzone Collectibles, we have some Jurassic World Pops. We got some Jurassic Park, Harry Potter. This one's the most interesting so far. Resident Evil Hunter 110. Oof. Pokemon, oh, a whole bunch of stuff. Got R2D2 with the uh, conventions that are collect. The Boundies Collector sticker. A little damage, but it's massive. Some really cool stuff down here. Get around these people over here. They're a cosplay. Nothing too interesting. We got some squish metal with some old Star Trek books. Some more collections over here. Okay, so I am here with Joseph Kovacs. And he has restored this whole 1981. DeLorean to the original movie. He was actually on Discovery Channel for the documentary of Out of Time where he restored the original one with Universal Studios. So you want to tell us a bit about the car? Uh, so this is the original 1981 uh, DeLorean time machine. Uh, after the restoration, I came back home and built it entirely to specs, so it's 100% accurate and perfect. Cool, and you said you do other cons, right? So you're going to do the yes. gaming con in uh, Cleveland? Yes. So the 
Cleveland G G Gaming Classics, I believe it was. Yes, it's going to be in September. Uh, we also, we've done Steel City uh, Con in the past, and we plan to do other conventions. Cool, and then you said that people can take a photo in the car for a $20 donation to... Yes, uh, so $20 donation, uh, some of the proceeds go to the Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Disease Research, and yeah. Very cool. So this car has been completely restored. It's got the original tires and everything built by this man himself. So thank you very much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. All right, guys. It's Hooked on Sabres. They mainly do lightsabers. But here are some of their pops that they have. Funny how some of these places uh, do that don't exactly specialize in Funko. That's one of the coolest pops you may see at a con. So most expensive one we have here is this anti venom Glow. That is the re-release because it doesn't have the box on sticker. Some really, really cool stuff here. Some stuff on the back here. So they mainly specialize in lightsabers and wands from Loki. They got some Pokemon money over here. That's really cool. There's all the lightsabers. Very, very cool. We're here with Dad's Toys. Got some cool pops here. It's the expensive stuff off top, so we have a lot of autographs. Some cool autos, some more expensive stuff over here. We have 500 piece Eric Davis. That's cool. So a lot of old stuff, some clock stuff. We got some die cast, stuff and everything here. Really cool stuff at the top, bottom, everywhere you go. Seems to be fairly priced. Nothing too exuberant, which is always nice. Uh, Happy Falls models and Mabel. Those two are actually really cool. I wanted those for my collection, but I'm gonna hold off for now. It's a pop, it's certainly one of the cooler ones. All right, so we're going to go to the outside. So here on the outside, we have the Ichiraku Ramen box from when the uh, Kakashi Rai Kiri came out. All of this stuff over here. Very cool. All right, guys, so we just left Cleveland Comic Con. I wasn't actually there for much. I just really wanted my... Uh, pops that were signed authenticated so it was actually really cool so it was really cool to see that 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 con specifically was very fairly priced like mainly ppg or under ppg which was really really cool because usually you go to comic cons that are exuberantly priced so to see something like where they were like fair fair priced was uh very interesting for me to see so there was a lot of cool things to see there i think today it being sunday we missed a lot of the uh, cosplayers but uh Again, still really cool to see, and the fact that everything was fair priced, that was awesome. So, I'll give my uh, full review when I get home, so, see you guys Alright guys, so that is a wrap. Uh, we have been done Cleveland Comic Con for a few days now. It is now Friday when I'm recording this little portion right here. I'm pretty much getting ready to go to work, then I'm going to go to Ottawa Comic Con right after, so I'm going to be dead tired. But, here's my overview of Cleveland Comic Con, since it was very, very, very different from Fan Expo, not Fan Expo, that was Fan Expo, from Toronto Comic Con. So, Cleveland Comic Con was really, really cool because it was actually much quieter, which would make you think it wasn't very cool, but it was like, it was almost like it was less stressful to walk around the lanes, you weren't body checking people to get out of your way, and it was just overall a different environment. So, Toronto Comic Con was very packed, very condensed, and the uh, celebrity autographs uh, were, they were all right. They were, I mean, like, they had who I wanted, but they had a lot of the boys and everything. So, to me, it was okay. It was, like, mediocre. I'll, I'd give it, like, a solid, like, 7.5 out of 10. I'm sure for other people who are fans of everything else, it was definitely, like, a 9 out of 10. But personally, for me, it wasn't that great. For But rating it objectively, is that the word? I think so. Uh, it probably isn't. But anyways, from, like, another, from just, like, a standpoint of, like, how good it was, I'd probably give it an 8. Like... Honestly, like the, the amount of people they had was cool. They had the boys. They had Steve Gee, who was, you know, I just wish they had more things for him to sign. He had a few really cool people there. So, anyways, that's Toronto Comic Con. However, Cleveland Fan Expo, 
I keep calling it Comic Con, but it was actually Fan Expo. Cleveland Fan Expo had so many different people. It was super, super, super diverse. Like you had Peter Cohen, who's Optimus Prime, and that's pretty much all I really know because they had that's the only one I really cared about. I didn't get an Optimus Prime sign because I don't have one yet. So I'm hoping that he comes to Fan Expo in, in Toronto, and uh, I will get him signed then. But they had like anime actors from My Hero Academia. They had people from The Office. It was like it was nuts. The uh, the autographs you could get there it was crazy. Um, oh, thank you. Sorry, my dog just like did this weird weird yawn. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, sorry. Overall, it was really cool. So not a whole lot of pops, which was also surprising. I guess since it's a smaller con and with WonderCon going on at the same time. You know, you kind of lose it in a bit with the with the pop kind of thing, but still had a lot of great options. They had a lot of really cool stuff there. Some of the stuff that you'll see, you would have seen earlier in the video. Um, I did interview that guy from the Back to the Future with like the Back to the Future cart. Uh, that was really cool. That was probably my favorite thing about the entire con was just getting to interview that guy. I'm gonna see if I can find his page before I post this. Um, if not, I hope he finds me, and then I can we can reach out. Maybe I'll we'll do something else, and I'm try and get a mentioned in here at some point but uh yeah overall it was just super cool super uh, it was like a super laid back con and like super uh, i don't know i had a great time um so like i said i'm going to uh, the mini ottawa comic con right after work so like i'm finished work at like one in the morning so i'm pretty much gonna finish work come home shower and leave so i'm gonna get to ottawa for like four maybe five in the morning i'll be stupid tired i'm gonna fall asleep at my buddy's house and we're gonna go right to ottawa comic-con which uh doesn't actually have any autographs which is why it's called a mini con so we're gonna I'm just, obviously recording there i'm gonna have a whole bunch of stuff coming in for that um but overall like like i said it was super cool i unfortunately didn't get anything from this con i had a lot of stuff i wanted but i'm kind of on like a spending we'll call it a diet right now spending diet because i'm trying to cut out the spending <laughs> um most people cut out carbs i cut out spending um because i'm actually going to japan at the end of this month so i'm not of this month and the next month because we're still in march so well technically maybe when i post this anyways at the end of april I am in Japan, so I will, I'm will. i trying to save as much money as possible, so I'm being very, very calculated with my spending, so I can kind of, you know, have money when I go. So, uh, if I wasn't going to Japan, would I have bought something? Yes, 100%. Um, I think the final note on this video, though, is that the one thing I did notice about the Cleveland Con, the Cleveland Fan Expo, was it was super fairly priced. Like, most of the people there were following PPG or going under it, which was insane. So, I, I have never, I don't think, I never would have imagined that because, like, if you, went to, if you go to Toronto Comic Con or any of the other cons in general, you will see these exasperated prices. I'm hoping that's the right word. You're gonna hear that a lot from me because I'm gonna use words that seem so like I'm smart, but I'm not. <laughs> Anyways, they had these, like, extraordinarily high in prices, but this one was like, PPG's 50 bucks. Cool, we're asking 35. Okay. So, it's really, really nice to see that. It was really cool, really fun. So, anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, nightpick21 underscore. TikTok, nightpick21. Obviously, follow my whatnot, please. Um, which again, nightpick21. So, yeah. Overall, I liked the con. I'd give it an 8.5 out of 10 because it had it was it was spacious wasn't crowded it had amazing people for signatures had jsa which was the main reason i went and the people there were just so cool thank you barkley so overall eight and a half out of ten um and i don't i honestly think that's that yeah that's that i don't even know what to say now like i'm like i lost for words i kind of lost my train of thought there so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video like i said please don't forget to like and subscribe again. Um, and the next video will probably be my pop hunt in Cleveland. And then the video after that will be Ottawa Mini Comic Con. So, hope you guys all enjoy those. Please follow to stay tuned. And I'll see you guys in the next video.